We're saying non-human animals are going to be persons, not people, but persons, and they're going to be rights bearers. In law, the fundamental distinction is between being a thing and being a person. When she's a thing, she's the same as the palm tree out there. But when she's a person, she's the same as my son. That's it. That is the one that someone gave me in 1979 that was the first time I opened this book up. I said, holy smoke, I had no idea that we were treating animals this way. I began in the area in 1981 when people laughed at me and they barked when I went into a courtroom and, uh, and people thought what I was doing was exceedingly odd. And that has changed. In the United States alone, you know, for every beat of my heart, 160 animals are killed. So I can work for the next 40 or 50 years and I can save the lives of one heartbeat's worth of animals. Uh, I didn't want to do that. And now we've been laying the groundwork for the first lawsuits that are going to, to truly, seriously take on the idea of whether a non-human animal has to be a legal thing or whether or not it's possible to be a legal person. Without personhood, you're invisible to the civil law. So how do you get the attention of the judge? How do you say, hey, I shouldn't, I shouldn't be a thing. I should be a legal person. We'll be arguing that our non-human animal plaintiff, whoever he or she might be, is entitled to personhood and then certain kinds of fundamental rights because as a matter of liberty, they have what it takes for personhood. And as a matter of equality, because they're similar to humans who already have this kind of personhood in a relevant way. You know, the, the animals that we're looking at are um, most closely are the different species of great apes, the, the uh, species of um, elephants and of, um, of cetaceans. So I'm looking to speak to the world's experts in those areas, especially the cognition, those are the people that I try to track down. I know you want to see him. I know you want to see him. <laughs> when he's ready, we can only go to people when they're ready. He would like to learn a quick language. If we knew a quick language, we could probably instill it in Tico. So we may be coming to you to see if you might help us in filing an affidavit, um, kind of talking about your, your work, especially it, if we have an ape. Yes. Um, uh, talking about the cognitive abilities that they might have that would then help us persuade courts. You can see that Kanzi's already asking for you to talk to him. You want me to come in and see you? Yeah, he wants me to come in and see him right now. Question, visitors have balls. Do you have a ball? Kanzi wants to know if you have a ball. Is this the ball or is it a bigger ball? Kanzi, come say big if you want a big ball. I don't know. I don't know where the big ball is. In Japan, there was a, uh, there was a chimpanzee colony and then the place built a uh, kind of a lab that jutted into the place where the chimpanzees were outside. And then they had a computer terminals inside and outside. That's where they have the um, experiments about the memory. They like flash something on the screen for like a quarter second. They'll flash a series of numbers and then they cover up the numbers in, in a, like a tenth of a second. Yes. And then the chimpanzees can then recall what what the numbers were and press them in the right order. I did that. I was not as good as the chimpanzees. <laughs> they had you do it? Yes, I tried it. <laughs> that was fun. Well, I think we decided on New York. We should begin going ahead with the chimpanzees. Both yeah. acquired from the circus. One is male, one is female. And on a scale of A plus to F, they give it an F. <gasps> No. Yes. This is the, the Better Business Bureau. My guess is they're a wow. scuzzy place that has other kinds of animals, probably pathetic Correct. animals in pathetic Tigers cages. And, yeah. They have a petting zoo. Uh, oh, have, so we, we, know, we, know, we know what we're looking okay, at. So we know what we're up against. Yes, 99% DNA. 
He said that the other chimpanzee died about three days ago and that she was 55 and that they only lived till 60. I think he's been there for seven years in that place with that other chimpanzee for seven years and now for three days he's all by himself. I'm sure he must be grieving in, in mourning in the way the chimpanzees do. That chimpanzee is, is depressed. Well, with any luck, it's um, almost May, seven or eight months, um, we have a shot of getting him out of there. I believe that I'm riding a tide of history and also partly pushing it. And it's going to happen, but it's not going to be a straight line, that's for sure. It's time to begin.